believe that because America's in a recession doesn't necessarily mean that God's people need to be in recession. If you read throughout the Old Testament, every time nations would go into a time of recession or drought, it was never meant for the people of God to experience that drought, but it was because of their disobedience they moved into the drought as well. I believe that this is a time where the church should be prospering at its highest level. Do you know why? Because you serve a mighty God. A God that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. Now, before I get started, I better read this. Malachi chapter 3, verse 8 and 11. When you have it, say amen. amen. It says, will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what way have, I, have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. You notice it says tithes and offerings. Come on, I knew it was going to get quiet in here because some folks get real nervous when church, when preachers start talking about money. I'll tell you what, if you're going to be uncomfortable about me talking mo about money this morning, maybe you might want to go home and come back in Easter when we're talking about something a little bit more nicer. Amen. But today we're going to talk about tithe and offering. Are you with me? Let's not get quiet. Look, come on. Amen. Talk to me. Verse 9. It says, in t how have you robbed me in tithe and offering? You are cursed with a curse. For you have robbed me, even this whole nation. And then he says, bring all the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and try me and know this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing. Listen, church, that's the dimension I want to live in. When open heaven is open unto me, when God's supernatural blessing is open unto me. Church, how do we live in that realm? Well, it's telling us how. It's, it's to be obedient in our tithe and offering. Now, look what he says in verse 11. And I will rebuke the devourer for your name's sake. I, I bet you didn't know this, but... But tithe and offering is a weapon in the arsenal of spiritual warfare. You may not look at it that way, but when you give to God, God takes care of his business. How many know that God is not man that he should lie? No, really, how many know that God is not man that he should lie? Now look, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 26. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 26. And when you have it, say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 26. For the earth is the Lord's and all its fullness. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this message, this word. Bless this house and what you're going to do in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone says, Amen. Amen. You may be seated if you can. Church, I don't know if you know this or not, but we are owners of nothing look to your neighbor and say we are owners of nothing now you might be one of those that live in a nice house in this neighborhood but the truth be told you are not the owner of that house you know we are not owners of anything in fact the bible says i just read it there it says that the earth is the lord's and its fullness see nothing we own belongs to us but you know what the word of god teaches us and you know what the word of god tells us he says this that God has blessed us with what we have. In fact, the Bible says this in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 7. It says, For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we cannot carry nothing out. Now, maybe you're driving that nice Jaguar I saw in the parking lot, but if you were to check out of this earth today, I promise you one thing, you will not take your Jaguar with you. Sisters, you may have a nice coach purse on you this morning, but I promise you one thing. When you die, that coach purse ain't going with you. Do you know why? Because everything, uh, listen, the earth is the Lord's and everything we own belongs to God. This, that tithing and offering is not an issue about money, but tithing and offering is an issue about the covenant that you have with God. Are you with me this morning? This is about a covenant that God has made with you because God has said, listen, if you bring all the tithe to the storehouse, then I will open up heaven and I will bless you. And I want you to know something, that you talk to those people who are faithful in tithe. God blesses them in money or in things money cannot buy. I believe tonight or this morning, somebody needs to tithe because you need a family member that needs to be delivered from the, from the prince of darkness. I believe there's somebody here that
that needs to give to God because you need to see a husband saved, a son delivered from drugs, a young lady delivered at some point. Listen, you got to prove yourself to God by coming into obedient in your covenant with him. It's about promise. Listen, God loves us and he loves you and, and there's nothing that can change that. But God is a God of principle. God is a God of his word. God's not moved by how many tears you cry. God is moved by his word. Are you with me? Are you listening? Come on, those of you in the back row, come on, wave at me. Uh, what I need you to see, child of God, what I need you to see this morning is that this is a covenant from God. This is something between God and man. This is what's going to show us and him that our, see, our obedience, we can be obedient in many other things. I'm obedient to be faithful in church. I'm obedient in singing on the worship team. I'm obedient in being at prayer. I'm obedient at just coming to church. But are you obedient in your pocketbook? You see, because that's, that, that's the attitude of our heart. God, that's where God wants to know, okay, let's see what they're really about. And there's people that say, Apostle J.R., listen to me closely. Uh, a tithing is an Old Testament teaching well the old testament is the new testament concealed but it is the new testament is the old testament revealed let me tell you something about jesus jesus was a tither jesus could never walk into the synagogues or get up and speak in front of the people unless he was a tither because those were the rules of the synagogue you couldn't be a member of the local church there unless you were a tither. So when we read about when Jesus got up and read the book of Isaiah and says, I'm anointed to break the devil's back and I'm anointed to set the captives free, it's because they recognized and they opened up his tithe record and they knew that Jesus was a tither. See, a lot of people, they don't, they don't know that. But the New Testament talks about giving all over the New Testament. Now, maybe I'm just talking to some folks today and I may not be talking to the whole church. Maybe you are faithful this morning in your tithing and offering. But it's always okay to go back to the basics and just listen to the word of God. Because the Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But I'm talking to those of you who come to the house of God. They listen to the man and the woman of God preach. Let me ask you this. Would you go to Perko's? Eat their great breakfast with that big slab of ham and walk out of that breakfast joint without paying? Well, when you come to the house of God and you know your pastor has put in the time, has put in the blood, sweat, and tears to hear from God, to deliver you a word. And what you do is you come and you tip God rather than tithe God. Let me tell you something. You are robbing God. If you wouldn't walk out of a restaurant without paying for your meal, why would you walk out of the house of God and not bless the house of God with the tithe that God has given you the power to gain in the first place? Y'all don't hear me though, do you? Amen. What I need you to understand is that tithing is not an option. It's not something you put up for a vote. For you to decide if this is the right thing to do or not. God says that the first fruit, the initial 10% of your increase is his. Church, victory in your life is determined on how you handle your tithe. 